a PhD student in social neuroscience at the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics in Tübingen, Dongson is fascinated, like probably quite a lot of us, with how different people interact. But he's interested in how this behavior is represented in our brains. Dong says that that interest all stems from him having a particularly cross-cultural background, having grown up partly in Korea, uh, a little bit of time in America, and partly in Germany. And that, in turn, is him due to being the son of a dad from North Korea and a mum from South Korea who got together in Germany. That makes him what's known, at least according to Dong Sun, as a child of love and peace. So open your mind, expose your brains, and get ready for peace, love, and with luck, understanding from our FameLab Germany winner, Dong Sun Chang. I want to start with a question. What makes us humans special compared to animals or any other living beings on this planet? You might not believe looking at some people, but opening up the skulls of people, in every single human, you found a brain. And what is special about the human brain is, actually, we don't have the biggest brain. Elephants or whales have bigger brains. But we humans have the biggest neocortex. It is the part of the brain which enables you to think. But if you look at fossil records and anthropologists say, when did our neocortex grow so big? then it was not when humans conquered the nature. It was not when we started to use the tools. It was actually when humans started living together with other humans, when the best friend and the best enemy of humans were other humans. So thinking about other humans made us intelligent, and maybe that's why we spend so much time on Facebook. <laughs> but this is not my point. I want to tell you about my most favorite experiment, which is how other people see the world changes how I see the world. So look at this picture, it's a spectrum between green and blue. So let's say most people see here blue, you take this color and ask 50 people, do you see blue or green? You say green. Do you see blue or green? You say green. And I ask 50 other people, no, 49 people, and they all say green. Now I ask the 50th person, do you see green or blue? <laughs> I think probably the person will also say, I see green. But this is not interesting because we know people will answer like it. The real question is, does the person really see green, or does he only say so because others say? There's a method to find out, which is called adaptation. If you watch a color like red for a very long time, and you watch something like white, you will see green, because it's the opposite color. So people didn't know it. You asked, did you see green or blue? They had to tell the adaptation after effect. And what do you guess? Did they really see green, or did they just say so? The answer is, they really saw green. That means when other people say what color you see, it changes the perception of the physical world. For a brain scientist's point of view, this is not so amazing because it happens in many different cases, depending on the context. For example, if you are in the moon and look at the Earth, you see the Earth differently than when you are on Earth. If you take sugar pills, but you believe they're real pills, then you will have a real effect. That's called the placebo effect. So, this happens because the brain works with something, expectations and prior, and other people can change how we see the world. I want to ask you, when was the last time you were really happy? And I'm sure you were not alone. You were with someone you really liked or really loved. And the reason is, being together with other people, having social interaction, that makes us happy. This is what food is for rats, is for humans, being together with others. And that's what makes us human special. Thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> right, he's happy now, but how blue will he be after he's faced our judges? <laughs> was it me, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you. Oh, it is. Um, so it's interesting you're discussing an internet phenomenon about dresses in some sense. Uh, um, um, and with that, so does that mean the internet is bad for making us happy if we should have actual social interactions, in so one-to-one -one or in a room, actually physically? So is the internet phenomenon that you refer to, social media, bad for happiness? There was actually a really interesting um, experiment of a computer scientist. He thought people do mafia wars, farm their all kinds of games, and they thought it's really stupid, right? So he made a game called Clicking Cow. All you can do is, you can click a cow, if you invite friends, you can click twice, you can invite more friends, you can click. 
But amazingly, people actually found it funny, and this game got very popular. And uh, actually, psychologists said the reason is you get social feedback, because you uh -huh. can click one, and you invite another friend. The friend clicks two. It gives you feedback. Ah, there is another person playing with me, which again stimulated our reward centers, mm -hmm. giving us kind of a pleasant feeling of being together. May it be an illusion or not. It okay. is in your mind. And this seems a fairly well understood area in science. What mysteries remain? What research has been done on this area? Um, pardon, pardon? Well, this seems quite, quite well developed science. You understand what happens, etc. But what mysteries are in this area of um, perception? And what, what research has been right. done? So the biggest mystery is actually how humans have a, such a clear gut feeling of what others think about yourself or how you're going to interact. Imagine you train a robot to behave like a human and have interaction. You should know how humans behave and how we interact. But the biggest mystery is we still don't know. That's why we cannot program a robot to behave like a human yet, because we still need to understand how humans behave in our interaction. Okay, thank you. Right. The mystery of empathy. One, I empathize. One more question. I, I'm so tempted to ask question a question about polling and the, and the outcome of the general election, <laughs> but, but I won't under these circumstances. I'm afraid the results are out on that one, Jill. You missed it. <laughs> I, it, it does suggest that, that uh, really crowd behavior is an important phenomenon in, it, in evolutionary terms. It is. Um, the social intelligence hypothesis would say, actually, the intelligence of us evolved because we started thinking about other people, whether someone is a cooperator or a competitor. So the social brain is actually part of our evolution. And what do you think that says about um, optimal group sizes? In terms, of, uh, in terms of social behavior amongst humans. Um, so there's actually a funny study which says, uh, if you look at the early humans... Just briefly, if you would. Yeah, so. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, so evolutionary, you cannot have as many friends as you have on Facebook now. <laughs> but technology enabled you to do, to do that. But really following up and having real friendship is not possible with that many number of people. That's what current state of research says. Yes. And that number is about 150, isn't it, your online friend? I think they've, they've done, there is a calculation as to the number of friendships you can actually have. I believe it's 150. It's called the Dunbar number. It is, too, yes. after Robin Dunbar, it is. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, you also for giving us our stat of the night.